Hey, Chris Hagen here. We're back at KJFF, and it says ABC J98. So for the local people here, we, we can get J98, which is the FM station, but KJFF, that's this particular building here in Festus. And come on over, we're gonna talk to uh, a guy by the name of Craig Hill. And, um, hey buddy. Man, how are you doing? I, I'm doing fantastic. So, so, when did you start working at KJFF Radio? It was about this time of year, about six years ago. Okay. And uh, what happened, I, uh, I was in a movie, I, I do some acting, and my, my wife is a uh, Rotarian in town. Okay. And so she met Matt West, who uh, was, yes. was uh, the, you know, the head, uh, the program director here. And, um, and he told her I was in a movie, so he said, I'd like to interview him about that. So we came in one morning and did an interview. I was real nervous, you know. But um, I always thought radio was cool. I always wanted to be on the radio. You know what I mean? Right. And I thought, I can do that. I'm full of baloney. Right. So one day I just showed up here and... And uh, said, can I talk to you, Matt? And Matt, he kind of remembered me, and we went out back, and I said, listen, I kind of want to give this a whack. You got any openings or anything like that? And, and uh, we talked for a while, and he talked about possibilities and maybe something part-time. Yeah. And he said, why do you want to be on the radio? And I said, because the guy on the radio is always the coolest guy in the room. And he yeah. hired me right on right the Right there. That's an answer. I, I sucked up to Matt West, and it got me right in. So, so for people watching this, Matt Lichtenstein, right. uh, which Lichtenstein was way too big for radio, right. so he just picked West. And Matt now works for uh, the Herculaneum School District. But you came to work here, and then I advertised. I did birthdays and anniversaries probably since sometime in the 1980s. I remember. And uh, so I came in at like whatever seven o'clock in the morning and i met you for the first time and and in my life i've had probably and i and i know over a hundred thousand people but there's probably been less than 20 people that i just immediately felt like i hit it off yeah, i mean yeah. i'm not saying you no, felt I, like i you felt the same way I, I, felt like, like, I felt like i knew you yeah yeah so it was kind of like a an immediate you know you want to call it a bromance or whatever, whatever yeah and i would usually come up and record ads and stuff and then you would play what they call bumper music and stuff, which was always like, man, Craig's just nailing my favorite songs here. And he was even doing it this morning uh -huh. in your conversations because I'm not a big beer drinker. I like bourbon. Me too. I like uh, whiskeys and stuff like that. And I drink my bourbon straight, you know, and one ice cube and some bourbon, I'm happy. Me too. Not a big beer fan, but when I do drink beer, especially at Main and Mill, it's Clydesdale. Yeah, I know what I like, you know, and that's, that's I, what I like. I though. do not want to drink a beer that tastes like a pepperoni pizza. <laughs> I agree. All right? I agree wholeheartedly. So, yeah. so, you, you're right. There was something, uh, when, when you came in there, the first thing I asked Matt West after you left is, why isn't he on the radio? Oh. Because you're just such a natural. And and uh, I thought, you know, I thought we hit it off really well, but I thought right. he's like that with everybody. He must have a thousand best friends. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah. I got I, I, I got a hundred thousand best friends, but I've only got one best friend. So Good. so guys like me and probably you, you got this huge circle. But it, for you, it probably comes down yeah. to your wife. Yeah. And not not that you don't love and other people love you, but there's one person on the planet that you can really trust, and that's your wife. That's the same way with me. Mm -hmm. All right. Absolutely. Not that Wade, my cameraman, is not an awesome friend and everything <laughs> yeah. else, but uh, I just buried my best friend from high school, oh. and then my other best friend just moved to Arizona. And you know, there's something about when you're in high school and you got friends. And where did you go to high school? Right up the road. I went to Windsor High School uh, up to my uh, junior year. And then I decided um, I might want to take a crack at the seminary and be a priest. I, I met a really uh, cool, we had a cool parish priest, Father Joe Kemp up at St. Joe's. Okay. And he said, you ever think of, of maybe you're destined for something more than a, uh, working in a bank or working as an insurance man or whatever it is. Right. You, maybe he said you connect with people. And I believed him and I went in and gave the old seminary a try. It was the darn uh, dating rule I yeah. had a problem with. Yeah. Uh, well, that only applies to certain priests anyway. You didn't know that there yeah, was a clause. It definitely applied to me. I, I, know, I, I couldn't get around the dating rule and I left and I think they were about ready for me to leave. Ready for you to time. leave. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it was a great experience, a great education. I spent three years in the seminary system. Got a great education and uh, and uh, moved on to other okay, things. Okay, so you still Catholic? I still am, yeah. Okay, Absolutely. all right. Because we've never discussed religion. No, they didn't talk me out of that. I'm still okay. very strongly Catholic. Yeah. All right, yeah. awesome, uh, wonderful. Yeah. Uh, I'm wishy-washy. Uh, 
baptized multiple times. Yeah, yeah I've <laughs> kind of like an episode of, of, of Bart Simpson or something like that. So when, anyway, when we were kids, my mom, I, I was, you know, soundly baptized in the Catholic faith when I was a little baby. Yeah. When we were kids, my mom sent us to a camp that she didn't realize was a Pentecostal camp. Okay. So yeah. we all got we got baptized again. Baptized and, again. And we didn't know what was going on. But right. we just, my sister and I kind of went along with right. it and uh, got re-baptized. So right. I've been baptized a couple, two, three times myself. So, <laughs> so like you. Hey, I'm hedging my you know, hedging, hedging the bed. We're covering all the bases, the bases here. I actually was in a Catholic uh, Cub Scout troop. And to get one of our little badges and stuff, you had to go to church, and it was Catholic, so we go to church. And I remember walking out of the church, going, <laughs> and you're like, it's still in your mouth. It took like three days. It dried on my mouth with the, the communion wafer. So, awesome. um, so, so you did that. Um, how did you meet your wife? Um, I got set up. Okay. So I made that sound bad. Well, I would say it was a blind date. Blind date. Yeah, I had a coworker that uh, that said, "Hey, let's go have a beer after work." And I said, "Okay." It was a particularly brutal day. Okay. And uh, I looked terrible. My tie was all messed up, and I just wanted to have that beer. And I show up, and there she is sitting there with her his wife, looking beautiful. Right. And there I am, looking like a complete slob. She sang karaoke, and I fell in love with her immediately. Right then. She sang an Elvis song. So that's really? Why, that's why I fell in love. Oh, that is yeah. way better We've story been, than mine. Uh, <laughs> We've been together twenty. Five years now we got two beautiful children and your son's name is Charles and he works here at the radio station. and he works here at the radio station yep. and your daughter's name autumn autumn hill and does she date anybody from the radio station she does good segue <laughs> wow <laughs> <laughs> thank you Matt West yes we had just a... checked off all the hill boxes so. <laughs> we had a uh, thank you Matt West <laughs> he completely set us up uh, yeah my uh, we, the old uh, sports director here Matt Greenwood Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. And um, I, I, I like Matt a lot. And my daughter had brought home the 11th slob in a row. Right. And I'm thinking, oh, there are no nice guys out there for someone my daughter's age. And I, I thought about about Matt Greenwood, just yeah. one of the nicest, hardest working, nicest people I know. Right. And I thought, Autumn, Matt. And then I said to my daughter, why don't you come in and watch what Dad does on the radio sometime? Ooh. She came in, and uh, I told Carrie, who used to work here, kind of uh -huh. like a busybody around and everything. Right. I told the right person what I needed to tell. I said, I think my daughter thinks Matt's cute. Within 20 minutes, they were dating. There so you go. I, I told the right person. There you go. My daughter literally just got married in Jackson, Wyoming, Ooh. and in front of the Teton Mountains, and just right after the wedding, uh, the groom's mother said, hey, Chris, do you want to say anything? I was not prepared at all, all right? And uh, in my tearful speech, I looked at my son-in-law and I go, there's something that you have to know about raising a daughter. That when she likes a guy and you like a guy, she no longer likes the guy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right, exactly right. <laughs> So you ever got the idea that I did not like you, or I didn't respect your opinion, or I was blowing you off? It's because I really, 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 really liked you a lot. Sound logic. I get so, it. So uh, the same thing. The same thing. If I know, say I really like that kid, oh really? Okay. Well, that's, that's, that's it. Last time I see him, it's over. So it's yeah. over. And I didn't say anything one way or the other about Greenwood, and I just let nature take its yeah. course. So there you go. So how did you propose to your wife? Oh, man, wow, you asked me that one. The lamest proposal in the history of the world, but I made up for it. Okay. It was it was a spur-of-the-moment <laughs> thing. I, the spirit moved me, and we were in a freaking Cracker Barrel. And how romantic is that? Right mm -hmm. after I get done with this uh So 20, and 25, 26 years ago, you took her to Cracker Barrel? I did. You sat there with all the people that were oh, 90? That's where we were. And I, I go to Cracker Barrel all the time. As soon so as I'm I done with this biscuits and gravy, I got something really <laughs> important I want to have. And it, I kind of blurted it out, and I felt bad about that. So years later, and we kind of always laughed about what a lame <laughs> proposal it was. Years later, we were in Lake Como, Italy, okay? Ooh. And it was our anniversary. We happened to Ooh. be there, and I thought ahead, and I got her a new ring, a better ring than that lame one I got her. Well, first. yeah. And um, we're walking along the, the thing, and we're joking around, and she literally says to me, Craig Hill, there's nothing you could say to me that would surprise me. Boom, I dropped down on the knee, popped open the ring, and her jaw fell open. Mission accomplished. Right on beautiful Lake Como in the Italian Alps. 
It was awesome. Man. So I think George Clooney's got a house there. We we saw George while we were there. We, we took a yacht ride by his house. And he this, came so out. this this is this is us. I mean, we <laughs> can sit around at Bush Stadium for no and never for, watch no, the dang for, game no. because every single thing there's these. How fun was that when we went to Bush Stadium that time? We got one of, with the very first <laughs> new party rooms. We were like kids in a candy shop. Look, oh, kids in a candy. Look, free beer, free booze. They, oh, they had all the booze. I ever drank a beer like we were talking yeah. about. I think I drank uh, almost a half a bottle. I wasn't driving. It, it was, I think Kirk Mooney was driving. Kirk was so driving. I got to drink all the bourbon. It I was wanted. funny. Kirk told us. <laughs> told, told us me and Ryan. We're, we're thinking who we're going to ask for the last ticket we had. And he goes, "How about Chris Hagen?" And me and Ryan both go at the same time. Oh yeah. Yeah, that'd be good. There's the choice. That's yeah. who we want to go with. So that was yeah. a blast. Well, yeah. we cannot talk about any of the Chris Hagen, Kirk Mooney baseball stories. Those <laughs> yeah, are yeah, not enough legendary. water under that bridge. But, but only a few people are privy to them. So what we're going to do is we're going to end it, but then we're just going to start it right back again and I'll show it another day so we're just going to end it but we're not going anywhere but you guys stay tuned for the next episode that I got here with my good buddy Craig Hill thanks for all right